As a follower of Jesus Christ, it's important to understand that he expects us to live differently by analyzing the laws of the governments of this land to see if they conflict with the laws of God. If there is a conflict, which does happen sometimes, God wants us to obey him rather than men. My name is Jim Stiles, and this is the fourth session on the topic of citizenship. And in this session, we're going to look at the Bible's guidance how to handle situations in life when the laws of God conflict with the laws of our government. What do we do? Well, if you turn to the Bible, in 1 Peter chapter 2, Peter was living at a time when there was going to be a lot of persecution. And a lot of things were going to happen to the believers, a lot of negative things in their lives. So he writes in 1 Peter 2 at verse 13, Be subject for the Lord's sake to every human institution, whether it be to the emperor as supreme or to governors as sent by him to punish those who do evil and to praise those who do good. Now notice this, he says, For this is the will of God, that by doing good, you should put to silence the ignorance of foolish people. So Peter makes it clear, and so does the Bible, that normally we should submit to governments and to authorities. We should abide by their rules. But there are some times where their laws conflict with God's ways. And that's what we want to look at today. Do you remember back in Daniel chapter 3, there's a famous story, a lot of you maybe learned in Sunday school, about a time in which there was a fiery furnace. And there were three friends of Daniel, known as Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And in Daniel chapter 3 at verse 16, when the king had made an image and he demanded that everybody fall down and worship this image and, and worship this false god, they said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we have no need to answer you in this matter. If this be so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning, fiery furnace. And he will deliver us out of your hand, O king. But if not, be it known to you, O king, that we will not serve your gods or worship the golden image that you have set up. So when this Babylonian king demanded that they fall down and that they worship this image and worship his gods, these false gods, they refused to obey the king because this human king wanted them to worship false gods. So there are some times where we are going to resist the laws and the rules of the governments of this land. But notice it's when they're asking us to worship false gods. These are big, important events where we might have to make a stand. There's another case for this in the book of Daniel. Just a few years later, when a new king had arisen, and Daniel was now living before the king Darius, a Persian king this time, not Babylonian. And the Persian rulers didn't like Daniel. They wanted to get rid of him because they didn't like the way he was always so good. And he probably didn't abide by all of their evil things they were doing. So they tricked the king into passing a law. And it's recorded in Daniel chapter 6 at verse 7. So all the presidents of the kingdom, the prefects and the satraps and the counselors and the governors are agreed that the king should establish an ordinance and enforce an injunction that whoever makes a petition to any god or man for 30 days except you, O king, shall be cast into the den of lions. You can see, like, when the king heard this, he thought, oh, this is great. Everybody has to, like, petition me, and I get all of this fame and glory. But he didn't realize it was a setup about Daniel. So it continues on in this case, and it says, Now, O king, establish the injunction. Sign the document so that it cannot be changed, according to the law of the Medes and the Persians, which cannot be revoked. Once he signed it, it was going to become permanent law. Therefore, King Darius signed the document and injunction. When Daniel knew that the document had been signed, he went to his house where he had windows in his upper chamber open toward Jerusalem. He got down on his knees three times a day and he prayed and he gave thanks before his God as he had previously done. This didn't change Daniel's behavior. This was an event that was about the worship that he had between him and his God, his relationship, and he wasn't going to let the law of the Medes and the Persians interfere with this. This was a major event, and he had to take a stand. And plus, he knew the king had been tricked. 
Now, you may remember what happened in this case, that Daniel got thrown into the lion's den because he had, he had violated the rule. But God shut the lion's mouth. He saved Daniel. And the king was so excited the next morning when he realized that Daniel was still alive. But it's a good example of how if there's a big event like that where people try to stop us from worshiping our God and force us into worshiping idols, that is a time in which we make a stand and we do what God says and we conflict with the laws of, God, the laws of our governments. There's another case in Ezra chapter 4. You may remember the story when the Jews had been carried off to Babylon for 70 years and then they came back from Babylon, they came and they returned back to the land of Israel and God asked them to rebuild his temple in Jerusalem because it had been destroyed 70 years earlier. So the Jews, they started working on the temple and they worked on it for like 16 years or so and they got pretty far into it but they were sort of giving up, they were getting tired and then a Persian king arose who was an imposter and when the people around Jerusalem, when the Samaritans and the other nations wrote letters to the king, they scared him into thinking that these Jews were rebelling. So this is recorded for us in Ezra chapter 4 at verse 23. And when the copy of King Artaxerxes' letter was read before Rehum and Shimshab the scribe and their associates, they went in haste to the Jews at Jerusalem and by force and power they made them cease. They stopped the work on the temple. And when the work on the house of God that was in Jerusalem stopped and it ceased until the second year of the reign of Darius, king of Persia. Now watch what God did. In order to get the people working again, it says, now the prophets Haggai and Zechariah, the son of Iddo, prophesied to the Jews who were in Judah and Jerusalem. Then Zerubbabel, the son of Sheltiel, he was their governor, the Jewish governor, and Jeshua, the son of Jozadak, he would have been the high priest at this time, they arose and began to rebuild the house of God that is in Jerusalem. And the prophets of God were helping them, supporting them. So here was a time in which God had asked his people to build him a house in Jerusalem. And then the, the Persian king demanded that they stop. And now God sends prophets to say, it's time to start working again. Get back to work on the job. It was very clear that God's will was against the Persian king. And so he says, get working again and get it going. And so they did. And the great news is that what God did at this time is he removed the imposter Persian king, got rid of him. King Darius was now in and Darius allowed the people to finish the temple. It was all done in about four years and God solved the problem. But the people had to realize that there was a time to stand up against the laws of the government at that time and God would support them. And then they finished this temple. See, normally we do submit to the laws of the governments of this land. We covered this in a previous section. You remember in John chapter 18 at verse 36, Jesus was standing before Pilate right before his crucifixion and he answered Pilate, my kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, my servants would have been fighting that I might not be delivered over to the Jews. But my kingdom is not from this world. See, Jesus could have he could have overthrown the governments. He could have called on the angels to come and rescue him. He could have done all those things, but the time was not right. He trusted God and he realized at that moment that he had to submit to the will of God. And so he did. Later on though, we're going to find when Jesus Christ returns, there's a record in Revelation chapter 19 about the time in which he will take over this world. So the only time we rebel against the governments of this world in this sense, where we actually go and fight them, is when Jesus Christ is our leader. So it's recorded for us in Revelation chapter 19. John says, Then I saw the heaven open, and behold, a white horse, and the one sitting on it is called Faithful and True. And in righteousness he judges and makes war. His eyes are like a flame of fire and on his head are many diadems and he has a name written that no one knows but himself. He's clothed in a robe dipped in blood and the name by which he is called is the Word of God. And the armies of heaven arrayed in fine linen, white and pure, were following him on horses. From his mouth comes a sharp sword with which to strike down the nations and he will rule them with a rod of iron. 
See, this predicts a time in which Jesus Christ will return and God has given him the authority to take over the world and subdue all the kingdoms of this world. And so at that time, his followers will fight and the kingdoms of this world will finally become the kingdom of our God here on this earth. There was another time, you might remember, when the apostles were out preaching and they got in trouble with the government authorities in Acts chapter 5. And the authorities had brought them before the council. And it says in our Bibles in Acts chapter 5 at verse 27, and when they had brought them, that's the apostles, they set them before the council. And the high priest questioned them, saying, we strictly charged you not to teach in this name, the name of Jesus. Yet, Here you have filled Jerusalem with your teaching, and you intend to bring this man's blood upon us. But Peter answered the apostles, and the apostles, and answered and said, we must obey God rather than men. You see, here was a case where they were being told, you can't preach about Jesus Christ. You can't talk to people about the Lord Jesus Christ. And the apostles realized we can't give in to that. We must be telling people of this world about Jesus Christ. We must share the good news, just like these apostles did. And so if a government says that we can't talk to people, there are times where we must reject that government authority and do what God wants us to do. And preaching was more important than obeying the Jewish council. You read in Colossians chapter 3, where the apostle Paul says, bondservants, obey in everything those who are your earthly masters, not by way of eye service as people pleasers, but with sincerity of heart, fearing the Lord. See, normally we do obey, we do submit, we do go along with the things that our government wants us to do. But if those things conflict with the laws of God, there are some times where we must obey God rather than men. The Apostle Peter also commented on this in 1 Peter 3. He said, But even if you should suffer for righteousness' sake, you will be blessed. Have no fear of them, nor be troubled, but in your hearts honor Christ the Lord as holy, always being prepared to make a defense to anyone who ask you for a reason for the hope that is within you. Yet do it with gentleness and respect, having a good conscience, so that when you are slandered, those who revile your good behavior in Christ may be put to shame. See, God expects us to obey him and honor Christ in our hearts. And if that causes us to get persecuted, God notices And he'll bless us for obeying his ways, even if people try to persecute us for preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. So when our government makes demands today, we have to make a choice. We have to know our Bibles. We have to use the guidance that's in there to find out, is this something that we cooperate with? Because normally we do, but if it's one of those items that's against the laws of God, then that's a different situation. So as we've already covered in a previous program, we do pay our taxes. We do obey the laws of this land about police and the the rules that they establish. But when it comes time for them trying to make demands that we participate in in democracies and political responsibilities, there are times, friends, when we have to make a stand and say the Bible's guidance doesn't allow us to do those things. So the Bible does give us good practical advice on how to live today. And we can trust God's advice because he really does love us and he wants what's best for us and he's trying to save us into his eternal kingdom that will be established when Jesus Christ returns. Thanks for joining us today. In the next session, Richard Morgan will tie together all these sessions you've been watching in our series about walking with Jesus Christ. And he's going to show how they're all leading to this future kingdom of God when Jesus Christ returns. And that's the goal, to be ready for that kingdom.